everyone welcome to cancer healing journey talks myself sonali modi from community outreach team of zenonco.io and love heals cancer cancer healing journey talks helps cancer survivors and caregivers to share their story with vast number of other caregivers and survivors who have traveled or been traveling to this journey it also motivates and inspires them for the faster recovery so firstly i would like to introduce you to today's speaker miss michelle lambert she is a cancer survivor I'm happy that you are here with us today to share your story. So over to you, ma'am. Please start with the introduction. Uh, my name is Michelle Lambert, and I am a anaplastic thyroid cancer survivor. Okay. So at what stage uh, did it got diagnosed? Um, I was diagnosed three years ago uh, in 2018. And uh, the thing with anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, it is a very rare um, and very aggressive form of thyroid cancer. And there is only stage four. There is no stage one, two, or three with it. It's so aggressive and kills people so quickly. There's only stage four. So, so what were the symptoms and how it got diagnosed? Um, I got lucky, actually. Um, I uh, was having trouble with my right ear, you know, a little bit of pain in my right ear that would come and go. That was the only real symptom I had. Um, the other thing that led me to make a doctor's appointment, um, I noticed I had turned my head like this, you know, to look at something and there was a mirror opposite me. And I noticed a, a little lump right above my collarbone. But when my head was straight, I didn't see anything. I just happened to, I just got lucky. <laughs> and I noticed a lump there and it was very small. And I went to the doctor and she said, oh, it's, you know, it's probably, you know, it's no big deal. And I insisted on tests and that's it. So I had an ultrasound and then a biopsy and then I got diagnosed. Okay. So what was your first reaction when you got to know that you're diagnosed with cancer? and how your family took this news? Uh, I honestly, I had looked up what was in this area and um, I didn't have any, I hadn't been diagnosed with problems with my thyroid previously, but you know, my thyroid is right there. You know, there's a right where the collarbone is. So I figured if, it was the worst case scenario. It's probably thyroid cancer. So I wasn't too shocked to hear that I had thyroid cancer, but I was very shocked to hear that I had a very aggressive form of it that is extremely rare. Um, out of all thyroid cancer uh, patients, about 1% of them get diagnosed with the type that I have. And um, Everyone was very shocked. Uh, you're basically get. I had, it, my doctor had told me if I did not pursue treatment and even that was not a guarantee, but if I did, um, or if I, if I chose not to pursue treatment, I had roughly about four months to live. And it, uh, it's very aggressive, moves very quickly. And usually I got lucky and caught it early enough so that it could be removed. In most cases, it's too advanced. It has surrounded the carotid artery and they can't operate. Okay. And so it, it spreads very, very quickly, so. Okay, so what treatment do you underwent? Uh, I went through um, a very, the, you know, because the cancer was aggressive, the treatment was aggressive as well. And uh, I went through chemo and radiation um, at the same time. Um, the, um, I went through about, let's see, eight rounds of low dose chemo uh, with radiation five times a week for nine weeks. And then once radiation was completed, I had three rounds of very high dose chemo. And so it took me roughly about six months to complete treatment. Mm -hmm. So how was the experience with the doctors and other medical staff? I was very lucky. Um, I, was I went to see an ear, nose, and throat specialist. 
an otolaryngologist, and he referred me to a surgeon at UCSD. Um, you know, there's a University of Southern California here in our University of San Diego. Here in um, San Diego, California, he he has a lot of experience with this type of cancer, and he um, he knew exactly what to do. Um, he was an excellent surgeon. I was very, very lucky to have a doctor that had experience with it. Um, a lot of doctors, they don't, they can go their entire career and never see a case of this because it's so rare. Um, so it's not that they aren't trained well or aren't competent or anything like that. It's just, they've never seen, you know, they've never had a chance to you know, have a patient, you know, is diagnosed with that. So, but he's had a lot of experience with it and he was able to remove that tumor completely. Um, they did remove my entire thyroid as well. And uh, so I was very lucky, you know, there are other patients who have had this type of cancer. Um, they have to drive many hours and then get on a plane to go see, you know, a specialist who's had experience. And I was, I was very lucky. He's, a, he's about 20 minutes from where I live. So, mm. so yeah, I owe it all to him really. <laughs> yeah. So did you try any alternative treatment? I didn't. No, I, I went all the way with medical science. Um, I didn't want to chance anything. Um, some people had suggested maybe alternative treatments. Um, and I understand that that can help maybe in conjunction with it, but I wouldn't ignore, um, medical treatment, you know, uh, standard medical treatment, um, especially with a cancer so aggressive, I was not willing to, you know, take that chance. Okay. So how did you manage your emotional well-being? Um, especially with being diagnosed so quick, like it all happened so fast and it had a very poor prognosis. Um, most people, even if it's, they're able to remove the tumor, the cancer is so aggressive, it comes right back. Usually within, within six months, it's returned. Um, there is a support group that I had found. Uh, one was through, um, thyca.org, uh, the Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association. Yeah, they have um, patient stories, people who've survived. And there was one thing I looked up, it says anybody survived this, you know, when I was first diagnosed. And I read stories of people who were fighting and still alive. And that's what made me think, well, if they, if they can do it, so can I. You know, there are people who are out there fighting. Um, some of them, well, most of them have had a reoccurrence um, and they are using immunotherapy with their oncologists to, uh, it's a combination of drugs that uh, is, is keeping them alive. So uh, you've got to, it's, it's a very hard prognosis and it's very, you've, you've got, I just stayed positive. I tried to I don't know, have hope every day that I was going to get through this. And I've been very lucky. I have not had a reoccurrence. I'm one of those. My oncologist calls me his miracle patient because they really expected it to return. <laughs> you know, they didn't make any promises and they were very honest about the prognosis. And, um, you know, of course, we're ex extremely excited when, I, you know, every time I'd have a scan, you know, I'd be fine. Um, yeah, but he calls me his miracle patient, so. Yeah. So what do you think are the importance of such support groups? I think it's, it's very important. It gives you hope, especially hearing from other survivors. Um, your whole world is turned upside down. You lose your hair. You don't feel like yourself. You certainly don't look like yourself. <laughs> and... Um, it's important to realize that you can't, that it, the treatment will come to an end. Of course, you'll never quite be the same again after it. Um, 
there's, it, it was, it was very beneficial to hear their stories because now it's like my story has become a source of hope for people who have just been diagnosed. So it's kind of like come full circle. Mm-hmm. And it, so it's really important to hear those things and talk to them and said, you will, you will feel like yourself again. You, you will never be the same again, of course, after an experience like that, but you know, it, it gives you hope. Mm-hmm. So who was your support system during those times? Um, friends, um, they were, they were a good support system. Also, um, I did a lot of reading about cancer and other survivors. Um, and also there is an anaplastic thyroid cancer survivors group on Facebook. And, um, they were very helpful, answered lots of questions. There were other people, there's a man on there. He, he made it, he's made it 18 years. It was 18 years ago that he was diagnosed. So, you know, there are survivors out there and especially with a cancer that has a mortality rate that approaches a hundred percent. Um, a lot of patients don't make it. Um, that's, that's a pretty tough thing to deal with. I was 47 years old when I was diagnosed. Oh, also, this is also a cancer that happens in elderly people. So it was very unusual. Someone my age to be diagnosed with it. Yeah. You know, the majority of people, I think the median age is like 62. So, um, yeah, so that, that was the- also unusual too. It is. So what were the things that helped you and made you happy on this journey? That helped me and made me happy. Um, I'd say the, the friends that I had around me, um, we'd talk about other things, um, you know, music, books, whatever, things that were happening in their lives. And it made me feel like I was still part of the world (laughs) in a way, because when you're going through treatment, you have to be careful um, your, your immune system is not strong and you can be exposed to things that can get you very sick. Um, so you always have to be cautious of that. Um, and also going through treatment, um, especially, you know, when you have another round of chemo or whatever, it's, uh, you're not going to feel very good for a little while. And then you start to feel a little better again. Um, but just keeping in contact with friends and people around you that care, Um, it, it makes you still feel like you're part of the world, you know, because it it feels, you're kind of like in a, in a fishbowl looking out, you know, because you're not working, you're not doing all the normal things that you like to do. And people having people around you to talk about all kinds of things. Oh, another thing is you can't enjoy food. Food Mm. tastes terrible. (laughs) Um, so that's kind of taken away from you too, you know, so the people around you talking about normal things or, you know, just everyday life, it kind of makes you feel like you're still a part of it in a little way. Yes. So how you felt when you first heard that you're cancer free? Uh, Very thankful. Very thankful. Um, I felt like I had made, made it to the first milestone. My doctors were extremely excited. Um, especially my surgeon, he was, he was extremely happy. (laughs) Um, a lot of them, all their patients didn't, didn't, you know, make it their previous patients didn't make it. Um, my radio, my, uh, radiation oncologist, he did have one patient who had, uh, made it 12 years. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, again, it was, it's very rare for someone like me you know, to still be here. So it, I was just extremely grateful. You know, I, I, every day I'm thankful that for, for just one more day. So, you know, there are times when you feel that it's too much to handle, but you still don't give up. So what was the thing that motivated you and kept you going on such days? 
what motivated me, um, you know, when I was first diagnosed and I knew what I was facing and I'd made a decision that I wanted to pursue treatment, I wanted to try, I had imagined myself if, if I had refused treatment, you know, and thought, nope, nope, it's, there's no hope in it. There's no point. Um, and I don't want to spend the last, you know, weeks or months I have not feeling well and what have you. I imagined myself in hospice, you know, I'm dying. And I thought that would be hell on earth to me because I know I didn't try you know, it would just kill me inside that I didn't at least try, even though the odds were stacked against me and the prognosis is very poor. Um, I knew if I didn't try, I would never forgive myself. And mm -hmm. so for me, I guess that's a very personal decision for people if they want to pursue treatment or, or not. But for me, there was just, there was no other choice. You know, I knew if I didn't try, I would never forgive myself. So did you make any lifestyle changes during or after the treatment? Um, let's see. I, I have been taking yoga and uh, meditation. Yeah, uh, that has helped quite a bit uh, with stress. I've realized, you know, a lot of things I used to do or used to, it just used to be normal life. Um, think all oh, that's just part of it. And, uh, you know, you, ha you make a choice on what you allow into your life or um, what you entertain or whatever. Um, so I'm very mindful of that now. Um, and it's made a huge difference. Um, also diet, that's been a big thing. Uh, a lot more vegetables. And I was pretty good about it before, but now I'm a lot, a lot more mindful of what I put in my body. Um, staying hydrated, getting sunshine, getting exercise, things like that, realizing how good I feel and being grateful that my body held up through, you know, a very aggressive treatment and got me through all of it. And so I, in turn, I need to be good to it. <laughs> yeah. It got me cool. through a, a really hard, really long treatment. So do you think that cancer has changed you in a positive way? Yes. Some people, other people have asked me that and um, it sounds strange, but it's kind of a gift. It makes you kind of wake up and realize what's important. And when you're faced with, I've told a friend about this recently, um, as she struggles with depression and I told her, I said, when I was diagnosed, I remember thinking, you know, I've got about four months to live. You realize that all, what's really, really important, the people you love, the people you care about, the really important things in your life and all this other doesn't matter. Hmm. You know, it really doesn't matter. Um, so it's best to focus on what's most important in your life and kind of carry forward with it. Cancer in a way is kind of a gift because it makes you extremely aware of it. Um, it, it. It's a reminder every day. And um, what's funny too is I, I have a, also a um, autoimmune disease. I have a psoriatic arthritis and I reacted very badly to radiation treatment. Here's my radiation is right here in my neck and you can see the scarring, but my skin is permanently scarred from it. And there seems to be a link with uh, people who have an autoimmune disease um, reacting badly to radiation. So every time I look in the mirror, there's always a reminder and I really don't mind it. It doesn't bother me at all. And it it's it's always a daily reminder it's like look what you've been through and re remember what's most important yes so what life lessons you got from your cancer journey life lessons um i think we're all a lot tougher than we give ourselves credit for we're a lot stronger than we all realize um 
a lot of people, oh, you're so brave. You're so strong. I can't believe, you know, this is amazing. What I was like, I always point out, it's like, no, you're just as strong as I am. You just don't know it. <laughs> you just don't know it yet. <laughs> or it's never been put to the test, you know, but I, I believe I'm no, I'm nothing special. I'm nothing different. Everybody is, can be this strong. Mm. You know, we all are, especially when you're faced with something like that and you have no other choice. The only other choice is death. You know, so we're all a lot stronger than we give ourselves credit for. Yes. So how is your life after cancer? It's, it took a while. Um, there's always the, you know, in the back of your mind, you're worried about a reoccurrence or a secondary cancer or other complications or anything. Um, even, you know, the, after the long-term side effects of treatment can affect people's lives permanently. Um, they can develop complications or secondary cancers or what have you. So that's always, that type of thing is always in the back of your mind. Sometimes you feel like you can't get away from it. Um, and, but I've been noticing as time is going by, things are feeling it's like I'm getting further and further away from it now. It's, it's been three years since I was diagnosed and my hair has, it's, it's kind of up in a bun, but it's, it's about to my shoulders now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm starting to kind of feel like myself again. It does take time and you have to be kind to yourself and you have to be patient with yourself. You know, um, I know I'll never be the same again as I was but I don't want to be the same I'm much happier than I have ever been yes so have you ever asked yourself this question why me uh if yes then how you cope up never with this did. thought I never did um I think that's part of being human or part of being on this earth uh if you have if you have a pulse and you have cells in your body you can get cancer. Cancer happens at all ages to all people, to all, you know, all walks of life, everything. It's just part of life. It's, it's, it just is. And uh, I've never asked like, well, why me? Well, why not me? You know, uh, obviously it, it, I was strong enough to handle it. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. That's for sure. But um, I, I never once asked why me, never. So what would be your message to other cancer patients and caregivers? Don't give up, <laughs> just don't give up. I, even if the odds are terrible, even if, because the doctors will tell you the truth, they have to, it's their job. Um, they have to tell you. And no matter how bad it is, don't you want to find out what will happen if you don't give up? What, what if it works? Yes. You know, what, what, what if you're, you have years ahead of you, you know, what if, what if, what if, what if it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great to find out, you know, because look at me, you know, I, I really beat the odds. I did. Mm. I'm very lucky. So how did you overcome your fear of treatment or side effects? Um, I have to be honest, the first time I went to go over um, chemo, uh, kind of getting set up for it, they put my port in and I met with my chemo nurse and she you know, answered all my questions and went over everything, signed all the paperwork. I was a little freaked out walking into it like I was on the the floor with other patients and they were getting treatment at that time and it went through my mind I thought oh my god I'm actually in the chemo ward like oh my god I'm really here you know <laughs> and it's a bit jarring it's but it's not it's not like it is in the movies it's they've come a long way with treatments um they also have a lot uh, to help you with the side effects like nausea and what have you. They, they have a lot of things 
to offer that will help you get through it. Um, radiation too, they, they have a lot to help you. So um, treatment has come a long way. And the first thing people, it's not like it is in the movies. <laughs> it's not as dramatic, but it, it is hard. It will change your day-to-day -day life. Um, like I said earlier, food is going to taste terrible, you know, <laughs> but uh, it does pass. Your taste buds come back again and everything tastes wonderful, you know. Um, yeah, there are little parts of it where I was just like, oh my God, this is really happening. But um, you will get through it, you know, that it, it's, you will get through it yes. and things will be normal again. So, you know, it is said that art or any creative thing works as healing. So did you try any such thing uh, during your journey? I'm sorry, what, can you repeat that? It is said that art or any creative thing works as healing. Mm -hmm. So have you tried any such things during your journey? Um, no, I'm not much of an artist. I like to read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no, I have a lot of friends who, who are artists, but I am not. I, I can't draw or paint to save my life. No. <laughs> so when did you think that I can beat this disease or was this belief always there with you? It was, um, I, I, I kind of don't know exactly where it came from, but the feeling I had was overwhelming. Um, I had a feeling like, you know, if death was coming for me, it, no, it needs to wait. It can come for me later. You know, that I was not ready. It was not my time. And it was, the feeling was just overwhelming to fight. Okay. So do you have the fear of reoccurrence? Of what? Reoccurrence of cancer. Oh, reoccurrence. Um, yes. Yes. Any cancer patient does. It's, we, it's, it's always in the back of your mind. You're, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, it you have the feeling like, oh my God, I'm back here again. Yes. You know, you, nobody wants to go back to it. Um, you're thankful for getting through it and everything, but nobody wants to be back there again. Yeah. So at zenonco.io, we help cancer patients like through their journey mm -hmm. from diagnosis to forever. So what do mm -hmm. you think about our work? I think it's fantastic. I think all the support that cancer patients can have, I think it's wonderful. So definitely what you're doing is, is fantastic because it, it makes a difference in their lives, any support they can get. So what do you think about the stigmas attached to cancer and the importance of awareness for it? Um, some of the stigmas attached to it, I've had some people say things or, you know, I've read things where sometimes people think, well, what did you do, you know, to cause it? What did you do to, you know, they look at you like, well, you know, what have you been up to up until now? <laughs> And my type of cancer is not linked to any type of lifestyle choices mm -hmm. at all. Um, they have no idea what causes it. Um, it doesn't seem to, you know, run in families or anything like that. So, you know, I always point out to them, I'm like, well, five-year-olds get cancer, you know, um, there's lots of things, you know, that you can't lay any sort of blame on anyone, to, you know, and as, as far as lifestyle choices go, I always think like, well, people do things every day they know could possibly kill them. It doesn't mean they want to die, mm. you know, so this kind of a stigma where, well, you must have done something, you know, or you've been doing things your whole life, you've been smoking or drinking or whatever. And yeah that's a stigma with can I, I wish would change um another thing 
that I don't, that kind of bothers me is people, um, they love the victory, like, oh, I'm cancer free, or I've made it through. They, they like that. But what if the treatment doesn't work? What if the person's struggling to complete treatment? What if they have to stop, you know, for health reasons? What if it doesn't mean that they weren't any stronger than the next cancer patient? Um, all of us are fighting. All of us are, are trying. I, I hate the kind of thing with winning or losing or they've lost their battle with cancer. I don't I don't like to view it that way. Um, I, 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 so I don't like the stigma of victory or loss, you know, it, it, all of us are fighting and it can happen to anybody. So those are, those are two stigmas kind of, I don't, that I don't like. Yes. So if you have to sum up your journey in one sentence, then what would that be? My journey. Um, You never know when your life will end. We all, we all have no idea. But coming close to death in a way makes every little moment in your life afterwards, even all the little things that you didn't even notice, it, it makes them just, uh, it, it just magnifies everything. And mm -hmm. I mean, things I would kind of walk right past, you know, before and not notice. I notice everything now because it may be my last day. I may have a reoccurrence. I may, in this cancer, may come back. I don't know. Yes. You know, so you value every single day. I'm sorry, that was more than one sentence. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yes, okay. So thank you so much for your valuable time. So mm -hmm. I hope this session really motivates people out there who have traveled or been traveling through this journey. So it was lovely having you here with us today. Uh, once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good yeah. day.